All right, we are in Spain, in Cordoba, talking about the Great Mosque of Cordoba. Um, and this is from another unit. This is in unit four, since it's in Spain, right, Europe. But I'm including this in the Islamic unit to kind of do a comparison with mosque architecture. All right, so the dynasty is the Umayyad, 785 to 786, wow, only a year, and stone masonry, so it's built out of stones. So we have several there's five images that the College Board gives us. So you have two note pages where I spread out your images. All right, we need to be able to identify the basic elements of a mosque. We need to identify them. We need to understand them and know what they are. So there's this uh, visual here where it's kind of pointing out the Qibla wall, the Qibla, the mirab, uh, prayer mat, minbar, minarets and then a dome and a prayer hall. So we're gonna talk about these things, but I also gave you a lot of articles at the beginning of this unit in your notebook. So yeah, you can look at that if you want to. All right, where we're gonna start is this illustration. This is from a book I have, and it's an illustration of Muhammad's house in Medina. So remember when he is exiled out of Mecca, he goes to Medina and this is where he starts to create a following of people. So he's preaching from his house. So because of that, his house is the earliest type of mosque. It inspires the beginning of mosque architecture. And all of them, they start like this hypo style or hippo style hall. And we probably know that word before because we heard it back in our Egyptian unit with the Temple of Amon Re at Karnak, and there is a hypo style hall, and that just means many columns. And then the Great Mosque of Genet is also a hypo style type of mosque. Um, it's a parallelogram, so that, that's one of the features that makes this one very different than the rest, as well as it being adobe, but it has a courtyard and a hypostyle prayer hall. So it's very typical of mosque architecture. All right, another way you can refer to the hypostyle hall is by, is, is by describing it as a forest of columns. So you can write that right on top of all of those columns, remember all those dots mean columns. Um, and again, we're comparing it to the right of the ground plan of um, Muhammad's house in Medina. All right, so mosques are also going to have an open courtyard, and this is called a san. And inside the courtyard, there's always going to be a fountain that is used for ritual cleansing before prayer. So we're talking about general mosque architecture. They all should, or they will have this. All right, so the reason this prayer hall or the hypo style hall is so large is because they, they, it is needed to be large in order to have room for the entire male population of the city. They all have to fit in there at the same time for prayers. All right, so we're looking again at the ground plan. I want you to identify the Qibla wall. And this is called the Qibla wall because the Qibla is on that wall. And it's also kind of the same thing as the Mirab, as far as I understand it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So the Qibla is the direction that Muslims are facing while praying. And the reason that they know the direction where the Qibla is, is because it's indicated by an empty niche or an alcove called the Mirab. So what we're looking at here, this golden picture, there's this horseshoe arch, and then this empty niche or this empty alcove. And that is the mira that is indicating the Qibla, the direction to pray in. Um, it's empty because God's true being is a mystery, much like the Kaaba has been emptied out of all of the pagan idols. All right, so we know they face the Qibla, but what direction is the Qibla facing? Which direction do Muslims face when they pray? So typically, um, mosques, Qiblas are directed towards um, Mecca, right, where the Kaaba is, except for this mosque. This one is different. And that relates to the context, the history. So we're over here in Cordoba, Spain, and the Qibla is actually facing Damascus, right? Mecca's down here. So the context, I'm going to read all of it, and then there's kind of a summary at the end. So think back to the dynasty when we wrote down Umayyad. So what does Umayyad refer to? So that's the history. After the death of Muhammad, Islam began to spread out from Mecca, and the Umayyads became the first Islamic dynasty. They created their capital in Damascus and then were overthrown by the Abbasids. The lone surviving prince from the Umayyad dynasty fled to Cordoba, Spain, 
where we are right now, where he became the ruler. So he is the one that commissioned this mosque to be built, and he did this on the site of a Roman temple to recreate the grandeur of their previous capital, Damascus. So again, when any time there's going to be an area of conquest or you have a new ruler coming in or you are declaring a new religion, there's going to be a building that declares that, that makes that statement of power and conquest. So this again is continuing this common theme of victorious conquest being shown through architecture. All right, and here's kind of a summary that we need to know. This is from the College Board. They said the Great Mosque of Cordoba was built on the site of a previous church and included recycled ancient columns. What's the vocabulary word for that? Do you guys know? Spolia and other elements from Roman and Visigoth structures. So specifically what is being reused here, the spolia, well, what that term means, it's recycling elements from older buildings reused for new construction. You probably already have that written from previous um, pieces. We've talked about spolia a lot throughout architecture. But what is being reused here? This is a view of the hypostyle hall, right? All the forest of columns and then very specific arches are being used in Cordoba. Um, so the columns is what has been repurposed from these Roman temples and the columns were short. So they had to solve this problem. How do they extend the height of these short columns that they wanted to reuse. So they created this double tiered arch, also known as double flying arches arches. So I think of flying buttresses. These are flying arches because there's this negative space in between. So here's one arch negative space, second arch. All right, back to the Qibla wall and the mirab. The entire surface of the mirab is covered in mosaics in gold. So gold, again, is gonna reference the Byzantine Empire. So there's mosaics in gold and blue, and this is all created during the Byzantine Empire. Um, it also has intricate holographic bands and vegetal motifs that adorn the arch. So you can call this vegetal motifs, you can call it arabesque. Those are different terms that you can use to describe the artwork or the patterning on the mirab. And then here's the holographic. Remember, calligraphy is the most important form of art in Islam because it's depicting the word of God. And this is called a horseshoe arch mirab. All right, we are going to take a walk to the Mirab. So there you can see the marble columns that were Roman, and then the Visigoths turned that Roman temple into a church. And then the Umayyads turned it into a mosque. All right, looking up at the dome over the mirab, you can see it's covered in intricate arabesque or floral designs. Again, it has calligraphy around the dome. And then it has all of these arches, which create these pointed arches. So the dome above the mirab with eight overlapping arches, it creates the pointed arch. Uh, these crisscrossing ribs is a precursor, kind of like foreshadowing something that comes before the Gothic rib vaulting. So the Gothic church that we studied was Chartres Cathedral. 
right? And it has all the rib vaulting. That is 11,194 is the year. Yep. And then the Great Mosque of Cordoba is 785. So you can see this comes way before rib vaulting. All right, looking at the outside of Cordoba, the College Board gives you um, a wall. So we need to talk about the architecture that we're seeing here. Very identifiable features for Islamic architecture. There's the overlapping arch, which we saw in the dome. There's the lobed arch. Sorry, so here's the overlapping arch, which creates that three-pointed arch. There's the lobed arch, which is pretty cool. And then there's the horseshoe arch. All right, so the horseshoe arch was actually in Spain before the Umayyads came and conquered. Um, it was very common in the Visigoth architecture. And just a reminder, the Visigoths were the people that ruled this area after the Roman Empire and before the Umayyads. All right, but these types of arches becomes very iconic or characteristic of Islamic architecture. I was watching, actually I wasn't watching, my husband was watching some movie and I was working and I, I would glance up and I saw a building and I was like, oh, that looks like Islamic architecture because it had one of these types of arches in it. All right, so here's some more images that the College Board wants us to know. So looking back at those double tiered arches with the Roman uh, recycled spolia, columns. So it's also very recognizable because it has those striped arches. That's alternating voussoirs of red brick and white stone. I know this is a lot, you guys. This is overwhelming. Um, so the voussoir is a wedge-shaped or tapered stone that's used to construct an arch. So I would write down what that vocabulary word is. So looking at arch vocabulary, you have the keystone, that's the middle of the arch that holds everything together. And then the voussoirs are the tapered or shaped bricks that fit into an arch. It's basically the same as a keystone, it's just not in the middle. Uh, the Dome of the Rock also has voussoirs. It also has these alternating uh, colors of bricks. I don't think it's red though, it's a different color. All right, there's more. So now this is what the mosque looks like. So what the heck is happening in the center of this hypostyle prayer hall? We still have the courtyard. It's like overgrown with trees. You have this minaret, although that's been changed. And now some, it's like something has landed right into the prayer hall. So what do you think happened? All right, so this is some later context. So again, the, the Umayyad loses control over the city. This is converted into a Christian cathedral in the 13th century. So this is when the next conquering people come in and they made Cordoba part of Christian Spain. And then that minaret, which was the call to prayer, becomes a bell tower. And the cathedral is built right into the hypostyle prayer hall. So we went from this floor plan to now this floor plan. So we still have the, the Qibla wall. Looks like something else has been added in there. Oh, there you go. Looks like we have a transept right in there. So this is an example. Well, following a dispute between the church and the city over the name of the building in the 2000s, it is now diplomatically called the Cordoba Mosque Cathedral. It encompasses all religions. All right, so we should be able to talk about and relate these three different architectural examples that we've now talked about, because these are all different examples of architecture that has changed over time due to conquest, right? It had one function, and then people came in and took over, and then it had a different function, and then maybe people came over and took over again and had another function. So you have the Hagia Sophia, which is in Constantinople, and it was Byzantine, it was built as a church, and then it was changed into a mosque, and then it was changed to a museum, and just recently became a mosque again. And then you have the Cora Concha in Cusco, which was the most important temple in the Inca Empire, which was then transformed into Church of Santo Domingo when it was colonized and taken over, and then you have Cordoba. All right, and then we also should be able to, after taking notes on this, recognize examples of Islamic architecture. Again, the basic elements of the mosque we need to know, we need to be able to identify. And here's a reason why. So this is from um, an essay question on a test a couple years ago. So it says, the work shown is the great mosque of Janay, 
which we covered in Africa, which was founded in Mali, the structure demonstrates characteristics of mosque architecture specific to its location. So we know that's talking about the adobe mud that was used to build it, right? Um, so down here, using specific evidence, explain how the architectural features of the Great Mosque of Genet demonstrate continuity, so continuing a tradition with global conventions of mosque architecture. So it's asking, what about the Great Mosque of Genet is very typical in a mosque? So here's a student's, one of uh, one of Tonka's students' example. She got a five on her overall AP score. So she says, like all mosques, the Great Mosque of Genet has a courtyard and a Qibla wall which points toward Mecca. Muslims traditionally gather in the courtyard to cleanse themselves before entering the mosque to pray in front of the mirab, a niche in the Qibla wall. This mosque also has tall, narrow towers resembling minarets, which would call the people to prayer. It also features a hypostyle hall with several rows of columns. All of these features are typical of global mosque architecture. Boom. Perfect. Done. Check. <laughs> 